Hello everyone, this is Chelsea from Those With Words. Welcome to the channel. Today I'm here to share with you a recap of my recent New York trip and a travel journal update. I had a chance to stay in New York for about a week. I worked for three days, it was for a particular work event, and then I took some time off around it to explore the city and had a lot of fun doing it. One of the first places that I visited was Starbucks Reserve. I have been to a few reserves around the country, but I had never been to this particular one before in New York. And it was a lot of fun looking at all of the unique decorations that they had at this reserve. Enjoy the coffee, of course, and also the really fun merch like this one. This is a puzzle of all of the reserves around the world, which I thought was really cool. I also had a chance to pop by Kinokuniya on one of the first days I was in New York and I was pleasantly surprised to see an array of Nolte planners on the first floor. This is on the way down to the bottom floor which has a ton of stationery. And alongside all of these Nolte planners I found a one piece Hobonichi which I thought was so funny. This is the one for 2024. I have one this year that I'm using for 2023. I didn't end up getting anything from this section or actually all of Kinokuniya during this trip. I was just window shopping, but I was looking through some interesting planner layouts that I had found. So this is one of them. And this other one drew my eyes because it was just so shiny and chrome. And I had never really seen this before. So I was flipping through it. It has a pretty standard monthly layout and weekly layout. I just thought the cover itself with this chrome and um, storage area was really interesting. Kinokuniya, of course, has a ton of other stationery. This is their stamp section, which was very well stocked. And they had a bit of washi there on the side as well. And here are the document cases and notebooks. Uh, like I said before, the first floor had the Nolte planner shelves and mo most of the first floor actually was for books. And then a bunch of the stationery is downstairs. And um, a lot of these pathways were a little bit narrow to navigate. But other than that, it was a really fun browsing experience. They even had these Toyo steel cases that I was kind of tempted to buy, but I had to be careful of the room I had left in my suitcase, which was not a lot because we brought autumn clothes with us for this trip. So I had to resist that one. And of course they have a bunch of different pens at Kinokuniya. I tried this particular one, which is a bamboo jet stream. I didn't end up getting it, but I thought the bamboo on the grip made it a really interesting texture and writing experience. Afterwards, I went to Muji on Fifth Avenue and actually most of the stuff that I ended up purchasing from Muji is for travel. So I really like their travel related goods and travel sized cases for like toiletries and such. And so I ended up getting more of that than stationery funnily enough. But of course they have their array of pens here. And um, similar to Kinokuniya, this particular Muji was really well stocked in my opinion. I also tested out this really fun multi pen because um, well, this particular color didn't work, but I tried the orange color and it worked really well. It had colors like pink, orange, and sky blue, typically colors that I don't really see in multi-pens, so that one caught my attention there. One of the things that I actually got from this area was a um, pocket scissor, which works really well. Um, so it's kind of like a travel scissor, but it just looks like a full size scissor. So that is, um, you know, really fun. And it was really useful for me during the trip. Then I got to go ahead and visit Yoseka Stationery, which was so cool. Um, I was in Greenpoint for one of the days and I made sure to take lots of pictures and videos where I could of their beautiful store. And here is their little Yoseka Museum display, which I thought was so nicely done. 
I really like that they have all of their pens out like this for testing. I know that requires a lot of trust um, in your customers. And so I thought it was really cool um, to see what everyone wrote. And I tried a couple pens here just for fun as well. Their wall shelves were meticulously organized and there's so much there, even though the space is not too big. Um, I particularly really love their 3D printed keychains of their um, pens. So I ended up getting one of those. And of course, here is the partner shop stamp. Um, I got two copies of that. And I just really enjoy that there was this separate little area for stamping um, for different visitors to come by and stamp their notebooks. I also got this beautiful water view afterwards. The Yoseka store is really close to the water. So even though it was a windy day, I decided to sit here for a little bit and appreciate it. The neighborhood was really quiet um, and more residential than I expected. And that was actually really nice. It was a nice getaway from the busy, you know, noisy streets of Manhattan that I was working in. Like my office is near um, that location. And so it was a really nice getaway to this particular neighborhood. This is a clip of Central Park. Um, I did make a stop by there, even though I had been there before. And it still blows my mind every time to see that there is such a huge park full of nature um, in the middle of a giant city. This is another day where I got to go to the lovely Niko Neko Zakaya store. It was a dream to also go to this store in person. This store was also very, very small, but um, also had wall shelves and once again, very well organized. They had a bunch of their 2024 planner lineup at the front and a beautiful display of all of their pens and inks and stamps just all over the walls. This is like a wall shelf of memo pads, um, certain pens. They even had like little candles and such um, of their original goods, which I thought was really cool. And their washi tape and some of their original collaborations were housed in these small shelves. It looks really vintage to me, so I really like this look um, and I thought it was really well put together. There was so much to look at even though I could walk around the entire store in less than a minute. Like I could just make a small circle and that would be it. But the amount of product that they had managed to fit into this space I thought was really impressive. This particular display I really enjoyed. It was one of their stamp displays and some of these stamps are their original collaborations with other artists, which I really like from Niko Neko. So it was really cool to see them in person. So yeah, it was a really fun time. There were obviously lots of other things that I ate and experienced in New York, but um, in terms of my stationary adventures, that about wraps it up. And this is the what I got in New York section of the video, as well as my travel journal updates. So I'm going to go a little bit back and forth here. Um, but first, we're going to take a look at, I believe, yes, the Starbucks Reserve Roastery postcard set. This is the only thing I got from the roastery, aside from, I think we bought, um, me and my spouse, maybe two bags of beans, um, one for a gift and one for ourselves. But other than that, in terms of like stationery or other um, gifts, this is the only thing I got. Here is the beautiful foiled postcard. And I actually really enjoy like even this tiger design or just all the designs in general in this postcard set. I wasn't able to see all of these before I purchased this, so I wasn't really sure what I was going to get. All I knew was that I for sure wanted the foiled postcard at the front, and there is the back design, so I really enjoy all of these. Next up are the two things I got from Muji. So the first one is this little spray bottle, and what I'm trying to use this for is to spray my watercolor palette with, my travel one in particular. Um, and so sometimes I have a hard time like re-wetting the paints. And so what I saw other people do is they get one of these little bottles, they fill it up and they spray their paints like maybe two or three times just to wet them. So I got that. I also got this soft brush pen from Muji. 
I am not always up to date on what Muji has in terms of their stationery. So this is probably not new. It's probably been around for a while, but it was the first time that I had personally seen it or really experimented with it. And so here I'm showing you the variation um, with the brush pen. I wrote one of the restaurant names that I had in New York with this brush pen, and I really like the feeling of it. Next up are the goodies I got from Yoseka, and this is the Clampy um, High Tide, or Penco, excuse me, Penco Clampy Clamp. And um, I really like that it's a really generous size compared to um, the Traveler's Company Brass Clip, which I still really enjoy and use, but I think it will make a really great companion together, like so. And then I also got one of their original illustrated stickers. I really like this particular um, drawing, and so I decided to get that one. And then, like I mentioned earlier, this is the home pen keychain that's 3D printed. And I'm showing you a comparison with my home Pro Gear, Yoseka home pen. And I just really love the little details um, that were in the keychain and I just thought it was such a perfect little thing to get while I was there. So I grabbed that one as well. Then on to my purchases from Nico Neko. I thought the envelope was cute. So that's why I'm showing you the cat stamp there. And I am gingerly peeling off the Nico Neko tape because as you very well know, fellow journalers, I am probably going to stick that onto my pages. I got this really cute vinyl sticker. I got a lot of stickers from Nico Neko, and I also got these two shopfront postcards. And this is one of their collaborations with um, one artist. And then this fall one is from another artist. And I have a spring one with like cherry blossoms for um, the this shopfront one. So I wanted to add an autumn one to my collection. And this is their collaboration with Cupodo. So I have a stamp from this collection, but I wanted to add these stickers as well. And then here are some more stickers that I got. These almost look like, you know, postage stamps or postal stamps, but um, they are stickers. And so this is um, also one of their original goods, I believe. And then here are more stickers that I got. Um, this is also a collaboration. I tried to get unique things basically um, that were hard to find, or I guess in this situation, like not possible to find in other stores. I really, really appreciate um, that so many stores have their own brand and collaborations with other artists and brands. So here are the stickers that I got from that particular set. And that is everything that I purchased in New York in terms of stationary goods. In terms of a travel journal update, I just want to let you know that I ended up using a lot of the stickers that I brought with me in the sticker release paper. I added a bunch of like other things to this book after I filmed my travel journal setup. So there's going to be printables and other things here that you probably were like, if you watch my other video, like, oh, these weren't here before. So um, I added some of those afterwards. And then what's completely gone are the strips of double sided tape that I had put in the back two pages. So I used all of them completely. That was really handy. I didn't bring any other methods of gluing things down. So that was really useful for me. I also used up three of those pockets from Traveler's Company, which was really nice and fun to incorporate into my journaling. Here are some of the pages that I worked on during my time there. As you'll notice, I didn't do a whole lot of writing. A lot of this is mostly decoration and filling out the pages with ephemera from my travel. It wasn't intentional and there are some unfinished illustrations like that as well, which I'll go in and work on later. I did want to write more because I did bring two fountain pens with me. Um, and I did use them on this spread, which I 
actually finished while I was on the trip. It was basically a quick drawing of the little things that I got at Yoseka Stationery. But other than that, unfortunately, um, I didn't have that much time to work on um, these pages apart from making sure I paste these things down um, just because I did have to work a full three days and um, I did have a hard time sort of balancing my time as usual when I travel. Um, you know, your itinerary is packed and you're not always thinking about journaling at the end of the night. Um, there were a couple nights when I really tried to at least put down everything that I got from that day just so I don't lose track of my pages or forget um, what I did. So that was really helpful. But the one regret I have is that I wish I did a little, a little bit more writing with my wonderful fountain pens that I brought with me on the trip. In this portion of the video, I decide to go back to the front page, which I have changed from, you know, Travelers uh, and then said Tokyo, but now it says New York because of a cutout from a piece of ephemera I had. And I have a couple of stickers and PET tape that I um, thought about putting on the front and back covers of these notebooks. So here I am just actually making that happen and I didn't want to overthink this once I had everything pretty much laid out onto the internal pages I decided to just take the leftover you know stickers and such this Traveler's Cafe one for example is from Traveler's Company and I really wanted to use that up during this trip and it didn't make it onto one of the inside pages so I just put it on the outside cover on the back. Here it is in terms of my cover. It's not the most decorated with ephemera, but it does have some existing illustrations on it. So I really like how that turned out. I used up a lot of the PT tape samples that I brought. So that's, you know, what I'm showing you now is really all I have left over. I used a couple of these images that I brought from one of the calendars that I have. I have one memo pad left there and a couple of papers because I only ended up using one of the sheets to get the partner shop stamp from Yoseka Stationery. And here is the quick patina update and um, it's got some scratches. It's got some scratches and I am much more appreciative of this traveler's notebook after we took a trip together. So that is my travel journal update. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. Bye.